So if we have Laplace transforms, then it would make sense that we have inverse Laplace transforms. Or in a way, we want to know how do I get from big F of S back into, <clears throat> excuse me, little f of t. And so little f of t must be the inverse Laplace of big F of S, or we say inverse Laplace of big F of S is what gets me back to my original function. And these are the basic Laplace transforms um, from the other section. Um, we could also put in here to the, um, like the sine and the cosine, um, but it lets you see the inverse transform here. So I know that the Laplace of one is one over S, therefore one must be the inverse of one over S. T, if I take the Laplace, I have one over S squared. So if I need to take the inverse Laplace of one over S squared, then I know that's going to be t to the power of one. Some really important inverse transformations are all listed here. The big thing is going to be able to recognize kind of like that right hand side and then being able to track it back to its original. So the way that I remember it is if I have um, one over S, let's just say to the power of um, little d, with nothing added or subtracted to it, then that's gonna track back to a polynomial. However, if I have one over S minus a letter where it's a linear term, that's gonna track back to an exponential function. And if I have S squared plus something squared, then that's gonna track back to sine or cosine. Okay, so those are kind of the ways in which um, I remember how to get from our S functions and do an inverse Laplace transform to get it back to our original um, f of t. Um, the inverse Laplace is a linear transformation, so if you have numbers in the front or you're adding or subtracting pieces, you can just separate those all out. So let's look at this first example. I wanna find the inverse Laplace of this right here. And the first thing that I look at is the denominator. And I look back at my forms and I think about what form this looks like. And this looks like an S squared plus K squared form where K is equal to two. So what that leads me to believe is this is going to be a sine cosine answer. Now, one thing that I can do with fractions like this is I can rewrite negative 2s plus 6 over s squared plus 4 as two separate fractions with the same denominator. Then I notice that I have an S over S squared plus four, where K is two. So this must be a cosine. And then I have a numerical value over S squared plus four, again, K equals two. So that must give me a sine. Now for the sign piece, I need k over s squared plus k. So I'm going to rewrite six as two times three. Because this is a linear transformation, I can just take this negative two and keep it on the outside and then say, oh, okay, well, s over s squared plus four would be cosine of 2t when I take the inverse Laplace of that. 
Similarly, I need to keep my two to make this the sine of two t. So this three comes out here and I get the sine of two t. And that's my answer for taking the inverse Laplace of that fraction. All right, let's look at this example down here. Now in this example, what I'm noticing is I have linear terms, three linear terms in the bottom. And so I, again, need to split this up, but I can't do so in the same way that I did here where I just kind of moved them across da, 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 like that. Um, instead, I need to do partial fraction decomposition here. So I'm going to do S squared plus 6s plus 9 all over s minus 1 times s minus 2 times s plus 4. And I'm trying to figure out the combination of a, b, and c such that I get this numerator when I combine this fraction here with these denominators. All right, that tells me that s squared plus 6s plus 9 must be equal to a times s minus 2 times s plus 4, b times s minus 1 times s plus 4, and c times s minus 1 times s minus 2. If I end up letting s be equal to 1, then I get 1 plus 6 plus 9 equals a times negative 1 times 5, and then these all zero out. That then tells me that a is going to be equal to negative 16 over 5. I can do this for each and every piece here. So I could do s equals 2. I could do s equals negative 4. And I'll just let you know what a, b, and c are. So we found a. b ends up being 25 over 6. And c ends up being 1 over 30. All right, so I have negative 16 over 5 over s minus 1, 25 over 6 over s minus 2, and 1 over 30 over s plus 4. Now again, these are linear terms. So when I'm going up to try to match my, my s's and like what I'm going to be, I'm looking at these being exponential pieces. And notice in my exponential pieces, I need a one in the top. So all of those a, b, and c's become the coefficient in front of my e term. And in this case, remember it's s minus a. So a equals one. Here, a equals 2, and here, a equals negative 4.